What's the biggest secret as to why some wedding planners succeed in business while other wedding planners fail? That's a question that I was asked recently on a podcast, and I thought the question was so interesting and I had such big opinions about it that I figured, let's make a video and let's talk about it. Today, I'm sharing with you the seven things that separate successful wedding planners from the rest. Hey there, friends. I'm Candice Coppola, your business BFF. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you've discovered me. I'm imagining that you are either starting or scaling a wedding planning business. If you're in the wedding industry and you want to learn all things strategy, everything from marketing to growing your business to becoming a better wedding planner, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button so that we can hang out every Thursday and I can teach you all that I know about growing a wedding planning business. I'm a former wedding planner and designer, and over the years, I've met tons of wedding planners. I've watched wedding planning businesses open and close. I've also mentored thousands of wedding pros and thousands of wedding planners. And I see certain key things in wedding planners that go on to succeed. And I also see the opposite to those things in wedding planners that maybe eventually close down their business or they don't succeed at their craft. And that's what we're breaking down today because I think that success is generated by many factors, some within your control, which is what we're going to talk about, and then also some outside your control, which there's not, you, you don't have much control over the economy or the wedding industry at large or if a big competitor opens up shop and takes all your business, but you do have control over quite a bit of your success. And that is what we are talking about today. The seven things that separate success from the rest. <laughs> I have big opinions about this, no surprise. No surprise that I have some big opinions about it. So let's just jump right in to this topic. And I wanna share the first trait or differentiator that I see in wedding planners that succeed versus those that don't. Wedding planners that succeed have support and mentors on their side versus wedding planners that don't succeed just try to go at it alone. And let me explain. I put this first because I truly believe that mentorship is what helps businesses grow. And I'm not just talking about me as your business coach. I mean, people in your family, having really great support, your partner, your friends, your family, your parents, in your local community, people who have that kind of support tend to go on and succeed, but they also have mentors, whether it is a local entrepreneur who is mentoring you, a local planner, maybe the small business association you're a part of, or I'm your business coach, obviously here on YouTube. Successful wedding planners realize that they need to seek out people who have gone before them and who know how to do things that they don't know, and they're open to feedback. They're open to learning from people and those who came before them. They also have a really solid support system, both at home and then within the wedding industry community. What I found on the flip side is, is that those that do it alone, it's hard running a business by yourself. I mean, I believe you shouldn't have to do business alone. I did business alone for a while. It wasn't fun. It's much nicer to do it in community. And I find that those who are not open to opening themselves up to business mentors or to a wider community tend to not do as great as other wedding planners who have that. Education is so important. And it's one of the reasons why I started my community, The Planner's Playbook, because I believe it fast tracks your success. So keep that in mind as you continue to scale and grow your business. The next differentiator between successful wedding planners and the rest is successful wedding planners, they learn how to market themselves and they do it consistently. Notice how I said they don't do it perfectly, but they do it consistently. <laughs> There's a difference. Listen, if you wanna have a business, you need to market it. If you wanna make money, you need to market your business. On the flip side, Wedding planners that are not as successful, they don't put themselves out there and it shows. And it's one of the reasons why they lack clients, why their business, business lacks growth. Marketing is the most important skill a business owner can have. 
Without marketing, you don't have clients, and without clients, you don't have money. Eventually, as your business grows, you can hire this out, maybe have somebody help you, but for now, and for quite a while, you have to be in charge of this yourself. Successful people know this, and they prioritize mastering their marketing because marketing isn't something that we're intrinsically born with and you may not learn it as much as you'd like in school or in in your youth as you're growing up. So it's a skill that you can learn and it's something that you need to pay attention to. I know it can be hard to put yourself out there, trust me. I know because it's hard for me to put myself out there, believe it or not. We all struggle with visibility. But if you don't put yourself out there, it's gonna be hard for you to get business. And if you don't have business, I mean, what are we doing? We have a hobby, we have a very expensive hobby. <laughs> so you need to push yourself and just remain curious about marketing. On the flip side, those that don't put themselves out there, they let whatever is holding them back mindset-wise get in the way of growing their business. And it makes me so sad because they have the talent, they have the great ideas, they can certainly do the job, but they just can't get up enough courage or enough esteem, self-esteem to put themselves out there and prioritize their marketing. So we have to prioritize marketing if you wanna be successful. And speaking of fears that come up when marketing yourself, I think the other difference between successful wedding planners and those who go on to not be successful is successful wedding planners, they put themselves in rooms where they belong. They may not be ready to go in that room yet. They may not have the business or the street cred just quite yet to be sitting down at a table full of very established wedding pros or people who they look up to or admire or who are, you know, countries or, or planets ahead of them in terms of business, but they don't care. They still put themselves in those rooms. Successful people are, are afraid, but they're not afraid enough to do it anyway. They don't let their fears stop them from pushing themselves forward. And so there's something about being in a room where you belong. Maybe you're not quite ready to be in there, but where you definitely belong. That means to me, establishing relationships with people who have the power to support your business, to refer to you and surrounding yourself with peers who are of the same caliber that you are. A successful wedding planner isn't afraid to be a little fish in a big pond. They're not afraid to be a little fish in a small pond. They're not afraid to be the newbie, the little fish. And they're not afraid to put themselves out there. Where on the opposite end of the spectrum, those that don't go on to succeed, I find that one of the reasons why is they've let fear get in their way of sitting down at tables where they belong or taking their rightful place or just introducing themselves to people, networking for whatever reason. And that is between you and your therapist, they get so hung up on uh, and so afraid to put themselves out there with other people that nobody knows who they are and nobody refers or recommends them. So I want you to get really comfortable and better at putting yourself in rooms where you belong. Now, the next differentiator between successful wedding planners and those who are not successful is successful wedding planners offer top of the line services. They offer top of the line client experience and customer service. They are obsessed with customer service. Where on the flip side, I find that wedding planners that go on to fail in business have taken on too much work and their customer service suffers. Customer service, is so important in this industry. And wedding planners that know that and prioritize that, their business is successful because of it. It truly is one of those things that I guess you maybe even take for granted. We might take for granted getting good customer service, but when we get bad customer service, we certainly know. <laughs> so successful wedding planners obsess over their client experience and they realize and recognize that they're part of a really special journey with a couple who likely will only do this once. I mean, statistically, <laughs> they may do it more than once, but at this very moment, they're very in love and they're planning their wedding and that's really special. They recognize that and so they obsess over the customer experience making it as good as it could possibly get, making it above everyone else. Now, on the flip side, I said wedding planners that don't succeed, it's because they often take on too much. And I think that unsuccessful people prioritize booking more weddings over the overall customer experience 
that they should be providing their clients. And you know, listen, the dam is gonna break somehow, some way. We're only one person and we can only handle so much work. And so what ends up happening is, is you've taken on all these clients, great, but you're still catching your ass trying to do all the work and your work suffers and the clients suffer as well. So please don't do this. It only takes one mistake to damage your reputation in this industry. I mean that, and that's not to scare you. I mean, you can come back from a lot of things, but it's very hard to come back from a lot of disgruntled clients and it can take a long time to repair that damage. It's best to not even have the damage. It's best to obsess about your clients and their customer experience instead. The next differentiator between successful wedding planners and those that go on to not be as successful is successful wedding planners are constantly improving and growing. They understand that they don't know it all, that they don't have it all figured out, even if they're really close to having it all figured out. <laughs> and I know this, and it's interesting to watch because in my mastermind for more advanced wedding professionals, for women in the wedding industry of all walks of, of the wedding industry, photographers and planners and, and everything in between, those women have it, a lot of it really figured out. I mean, they have a really compelling six-figure businesses. They're doing amazing things, but they know that they don't know it all. And they're always open to feedback and to improving in all aspects of their business and their life. And it's why they come into this experience to have me coach them one-on-one. -on -one. And it's why they want to learn from their peers as well. It's what a mastermind is. And so the wedding industry is always changing. If you want to be successful, you need to to look for ways to constantly improve everything from your marketing to your client experience to your wedding designs, your communication, your process. It's really important. And the moment that you feel you've arrived is the moment that you're in trouble. And in fact, my friend Lynn, Lynn Stevens from Think Splendid, she made this great thread post on threads. I'll, I'll just put a picture of it here. And she was basically talking about being the it girl or arriving in the industry and how that tends to be one of the biggest downfalls of a lot of people. And I think that in part is because people feel as though they've arrived and there's really, they think they know everything. And when you think you know everything, you're not seeking, you're not looking to expand or learn. And when the, what actually ends up happening is that uh, things are changing around you and you're just not paying attention because you're just paying attention to yourself. <laughs> you also get complacent. And if you get too complacent in, in this industry, the competitiveness of the wedding industry will come out to get you, I, I promise. <laughs> We're a very competitive industry, in good and bad ways. And so well, all of this to say, those that don't go on to succeed think they know it all and they think they've arrived at a destination where they don't need to learn and they don't need to expand or sharpen any of their skills. And that's actually pretty dangerous because even me, I've been in business a long time and I know quite a bit about wedding planning and I know quite a bit about business, but I'm still learning and I'm very open to learning because I don't know it all. And I'm trying to evolve with the times because times are always changing. So as you go in, in to grow your business, please make sure that you're constantly looking for ways to improve and grow and you're always open to feedback. The next differentiator is successful wedding planners. They mind their money. And this is a big one. I am catching you on at some stage of your journey in this industry. Maybe you're just starting, maybe you're five years in business, maybe you're more, but I'm catching you at a time where I want you to take a moment and listen to me about money. Money is the quickest way to take your wedding planning business. And what I mean by this is a lot of planners that go out of business or that go on to not have success tend to overspend and not pay attention to their numbers. Now, when you start a business, you start it for all these reasons, and it's not to be an accountant or bookkeeper. You probably don't know that much about money and managing money and cash flow and profit and loss and your expenses and, you know, sales and estimating all these things. I get it. Most of us don't when we start a business. But wedding planners that are successful, they understand that they need to mind their money and that they need to become a numbers person. They need to prioritize their numbers. I've watched many a planner lose their business because they didn't pay attention to their bank account. And I've also watched many a planner come back from not minding their money and make changes in their business to get better. And they've actually become numbers people. And it's so fascinating to watch, especially in my mastermind, where these ladies are turning things around in their business and they're making better decisions because they're paying attention to the financial health of their business. 
So I've caught you on your journey at some stage and I want you to prioritize financial wellness. If you're not paying attention to the numbers in your business, you don't know how much money you're making and how much money you're spending, that is a recipe for failure. It's the cold hard truth. And you know, some somebody's gotta tell you, <laughs> might as well be me. So I want you to start minding your money, okay? You need to become a numbers person. And the final thought here is you will never out earn bad spending habits in your business. You won't, you'll never out earn bad spending habits. There's always an opportunity to nip things in the bud and to get better at money today. Now the final differentiator is this. Good wedding planners, successful wedding planners, those that go on to succeed, they have good boundaries. On the opposite side, those that tend to fail, they people please to death and they have little, if any, boundary. Boundaries are important in this industry. Wedding planning, event planning is one of the most stressful careers there is. In fact, I was reading an article, this was many years ago, where wedding planning was like the fifth most stressful job on the planet. It was more stressful than being a firefighter. Like what is more stressful than running into a burning building to save a wife and child? planning Candace's wedding, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but listen, our industry is very stressful. And if you want to make it as a wedding planner, if you want to make it as a pro, you have to get good at boundaries. Boundaries are so important. And I think that we underestimate the opportunity to set boundaries in our business and make sure that we're balancing our work with other things in our life. Successful people have boundaries. And listen, they, they work late nights, successful people work a lot, successful people are available to their customers, but they still have boundaries because without boundaries, you have burnout. And I have not met too many people in the throes of burnout who feel like a raging success. I haven't. <laughs> if that's you, come forward. We need to study you. Like we need to donate you to science so we can learn how you feel so good being burnt out. <laughs> Burning out in this industry is easy to do and it's hard to come back from. So boundaries are gonna be your friend. If you feel, and when you start your business, you really gotta be careful because you're so excited. You wanna help everybody. You wanna answer every email. You're just super pumped. Boundaries go out the window. But the more you work, the more you realize that you need to have office hours, you need to know when to say no and when to say yes, you need to understand what your scope of work is, what falls in it, what falls outside of it. You need to be able to understand how you're gonna communicate. There are so many different boundaries you should have in place, but a good place to start if you wanna be successful is just having rules around your time and your office hours. That can help really set the tone for you and your clients. So successful wedding planners, they have good boundaries. Where on the opposite side, they people please until the point of exhaustion, until the point of burnout. I will also say as a final end cap to this point, boundaries are good for you and your couple. I know it feels hard saying no to somebody or telling them that you're not available at 10 o'clock at night to answer their text, <laughs> but people need boundaries. They need to know where the lines are. And if they know where the lines are, they tend to respect them. Not everybody, but most people do. Okay, that was a lot. So let's recap. The most successful wedding planners have these seven things in common. Number one, they have support and mentors to help them. And they're actively seeking out people who've gone before them to learn. Next, they learn how to market themselves and they put themselves out there even when it's scary. They get themselves into rooms where they belong or where they want to belong. They prioritize those relationships and the proximity to people who are in front of their ideal clients. They also prioritize top of the line customer service and client experience. Successful wedding planners are constantly improving and growing their business. And they're also constantly improving themselves to be a better business owner. They mind their money and they take time to know their numbers. They also have solid boundaries in place so that they can build a business that's both sustainable and gives them the life that they want. Now, before you go, if you're a wedding planner, which I imagine you are, and you want to scale and grow your wedding planning business, and you wanna do it with some of these traits baked in to a community of wedding planners and a business coach, hi, 
me, (laughs) I want to invite you to join me inside the Planners Playbook. This is my educational community for wedding planners, where every month over 150 planners join me for education, resources, tools, group coaching, answering your questions, guest experts, and trainings. We even have marketing trainings inside the community that can help you with that specific trait to make you more successful. So go to plannersplaybook.com. I've linked to it in the description box below. Sign up for the wait list. Come and join us. I would love to see you inside and to support your business. All right, friend, I have a link to another video here that I think you should watch. I think you should watch this video next, and I'll see you in the next video.